Hello, it's Crypto CJ. It's Trade of the Day, Monday Night Zoom edition, and the market's rather pokey. The sell in May and go away strategy might be the best, but we're still here and we're still day trading and swing trading. So let's look at the market and see if we can find something. We'll start with the Bitcoin chart. Should be seeing my day chart. <coughs> yes. <coughs> As you can see, mostly a straight line. We're up, what was a half a percent a little earlier, less than half a percent today. But mostly going sideways. 27K seems to be a bit of resistance. Closed at 27, three or four on Wednesday, but haven't been up there since, at least on a close. Ethereum's struggling around 1800 and change. Yeah, look at that, just sideways here. Uh, nowhere near 1900 since wow well, since back back over here um you know, over a week ago so that's a little disappointing we're consolidating they can't scare you out they'll wear you out as the crypt nation guys like to say so just keep hanging in there maybe be a little more selective in your trading or alter your your take profits accordingly, maybe a little bit less than 1%. I'm still holding at 1% on a chart, you know, 10% using leverage. But I find that I'm in trades longer than usual. I'm used to be in and out within a couple hours, uh, half a day at the most. And yeah, I've got trades left over from Friday still. So that's uh, it's kind of annoying. I'm a day trader, not a multi-day trader, but you got to stick yeah. it out sometimes. That volume is very low. Yeah, look at this. It's sad. It's, we haven't had decent volume you know, since late March. Just. Yep, a little sleepy. I've only done four or five trades today, and I think I'm still in all but one of them. Bummer. Well. <laughs> It's Monday night. Let's, uh, well, before I move over to Altcoin Alert, anybody want to comment or speculate on the markets overall before we look for day trades? I was wondering if it's all waiting for this uh, deficit ceiling to be passed and re re resolved that this might be leading in. That's interesting. Yeah. You know, like, are the Republicans really going to do it this time? Are they really going to not pay the bills and let the USA default? I don't know. That just seems absurd. Uh, I mean, I know they want cuts in the government. I don't want to get too political here, but, you know, it, what Peter says is relevant. If the U.S. defaults on its debt, that could crash the stock market. And, you know, the crypto market would be affected as well. So. The, the bigger problem I was reading about is that it would affect the the US dollar on the world world exchange as far Definitely. as and and that's a too big a risk for the US to to allow to happen. I can't see that it'll they'll let it go that far. My memory of this good, good point Craig is that they've passed provisional bills in the past. okay we'll we'll extend it for two weeks or a month. But we really mean it this time, guys. It, it's never default. Uh, you broke up. I think you were going to say we never. So there's U.S. There's never no, defaulted. It's never happened. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, I think it would be incredibly stupid. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time politicians allowed something stupid to happen. But the dollar is already sort of in jeopardy, is remaining the world's go-to currency, and allowing our, our you know the U.S.'s debt to default would, would not be helpful in that regard. Now as crypto fans, you know, I'm torn between patriotism, yay dollar to uh, the reality that it's horribly inflated and much like, much more like to see crypto come into to play, <laughs> at least more widely accepted. But a lot of the information I've been reading in the, the crypt nation Slack group is, and this is, this is nothing I didn't know. And, that we haven't talked about before, I suppose, that that having the dollar remain the, the world go-to currency is sort of contradicted by allowing crypto to thrive. So 
I think they can coexist, but perhaps those in government do not. Just my two cents. All right. Um, any other questions or comments or statements before we move into all coin alert and some day trading? All right, let's do it. Let's see if we can scrape something up. All right, I'm on all coin alert. <laughs> all coin radar setting. Gonna refresh. And sort by AA score first. 80.4 for ADEX. I looked at this. It's got very little volume, so we're not trading it. Nano, that just bounced up here. I was trading this this morning. 79.5. We like that. So I don't have it up. Let's uh, let's look at it. Maybe it was Neo I was trading. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, that was the wrong, the wrong one. They're similar. Well, let's take a quick look at Nano. It's not, I don't trade on Kraken or Gate IO, but some of you guys might. So, well, there's some horrible volume. <laughs> That's a 15 minute chart. So, yeah, we're not going to look at Nano. Nano has Nano volume, so <laughs> we won't be looking at that. Was my bad crypto joke for the day. Okay, power, fun fair, eh. IMX, 77.5. I mean, you're looking for <laughs> values for 80 and higher, but we those have been few and far between with this lower volume in the last uh, four to six weeks. So if I get 76, 77, I might look at that. And I've had some success with trading IMX in the past couple months. So let's check it out. Immutable X. Start on the five minute chart. Let's clear these indicators. Okay, we certainly have no dip sequence at the moment. Our Bollinger bands look kind of squeezy. Yeah, 1% between them, so not much room to move. So this is not a good, good entry. So if you're not comfortable with indicators yet, you might want to look for a potential dip location with a, a price alert. See a little bit of support here <laughs> at 72 cents, 72.2. We're pretty close to that now. I see some more support again right about here at 71.7 cents. That might be a better option. And then there is more support further down here around just above 70 cents. So let's say you want to set an alert at 70 cents. It's pretty easy to do. Right click. And this open area on the chart, add alert, and maybe go with 70 cents. And I use my information source as my alert names. So that's an AA score purchase. If you type the same alert name a few times, trading view will remember it and <laughs> give it to you in a drop down menu like you just saw me do. And click create, and you're good to go. When it when the alert goes off, reevaluate. You might want to. Oh, on your notifications, I like to notify an app, show a pop up on my desktop computer, and play a sound. Usually, three notes reverb is my go-to for my basic alerts. So I'll click that on. Click create. And that would be my alert if I did them that way. But as you know, I prefer 15 minute alerts using indicators. So the first indicator we're gonna look at is divergence. That's a disagreement between the price action and the indicators. And I like divergence for many indicators version four with a confirmation on this non-repaint version. The first one here, version four, unfortunately repaints, but it is alert friendly. So be aware of the repainting problem. That's why I had the backup, which unfortunately is not alert friendly. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to look at the recent past. What did the divergence alerts do? And this is a, con a contrarian strategy. We're looking for, for dips in a market that's 
pumping and looking for for uh yeah the opposite pumps and pullbacks when a market's um dropping so most of these bullish divergence alerts did well eventually because of this pump here this is a dip on sunday and then a corresponding pump on sunday night and monday morning well by our by our standards anyway a pump you know it it, it pumped three and a half percent which isn't bad but not great either anyway not liking these that much i didn't you would have been the in these all day so <laughs> let's see if uh our other option the <laughs> super trend is better if you prefer trend trading you might want to go with this one super trend is also alert friendly you can trade both directions the downside is it doesn't trigger very often so we've only had four alerts go off since friday night at about this time so day trader i prefer more alerts than that but they were it was right every time you know a big sell move here caught that caught this um you know decent up uptrend here and when you're looking at your trend-based alerts you want confirmation on the sell signal we have rsi dipping down a bit and also the macd you know with the red above the blue so there are lots of different indicators you can use as confirmation <laughs> to, i've been using most recently and then I do have an RSI strategy I'll discuss in a moment. And on alert, right click on super trend. If you're trading spot, then you just want to keep it at buy. If you think, if you're a, a real pessimist and you just want to trade shorts all week or all day, click on the sell. I like the direction change. That's why I, I like super trend so much is, is this option. Once per bar close, this is an AA score purchase and notifications. I'll go with three notes reverb and click create. And I'm good to go on that one. Okay. And the last one I like is the RSI <coughs> catching price movement as it dips below the 30 value, which is usually considered oversold and starts to come back or dips below the 70 value after a pump that's considered overbought. So let's look at the recent history of this. And we pull up my horizontal or my vertical line. And we had a drop here. Alert would have gone off about here on Sunday. <laughs> And yeah, 1%. I'm looking for 1% moves because I'm at 10x leverage. If you're trading spot, you might be looking for 2 to 3% moves. So you might want to consider that when you're looking at these, these results. Here's another drop here and across. So we have would have gotten in on this candle. but doesn't work out and we get caught in this. So I do a process called ladder buying where I buy additional positions to lower the overall entry position. I prefer that over stop losses, but if you want to use a stop loss, that's fine as well. I do cap my, my, my losses at 10%. That's something I've done on most of my strategies and it's been working out pretty well i haven't been getting, getting get, i haven't been getting stuck in things as much as i used to so in this scenario i would have taken one ladder buy at two percent may if it dips down to four percent i would take another one but it didn't in this i took that two percent move and i probably would have been out here with a small loss on my first position but a pretty nice move in my second for overall profit and I would have been in that one for 18 hours, a little longer than I like, but it's still a day trade. So good stuff there. And there's other crosses here. Would have followed similar situations. Well, this one would have been about the same. This one's a better entry. You don't have to do the ladder buy. You end up 
getting out about the same place. So good stuff there. <laughs> These two didn't quite make it to the 70 level. You know, it made it up to about 68 and change and then dropped. 68 and change and then dropped. But neither of these drops were very dramatic. So I don't know if I would bend my 70 rule on this or not. 1.2% yeah, on that one. This one. Now nah, you'd still be in that trade. So I think I'd stick with my 70-30 rule. So I'm going to, for an alert on the RSI, <laughs> catching both directions. If I just want to trade longs, I would do this. Right click on the RSI, cross above the 30. Once per bar close. And that's still my AA score. So if you just want to catch each time it dips below 30, as long as you have this alert open, it will set, give you an alert when that happens. We got the three notes reverb going. If you want to catch both directions, which is my preference, we're going to enter a channel. Upper is 70, lower is 30. Once per bar close, AA score purchase. If I click create, I'm going to get this rectangle here. So when this dip happens here, it doesn't trigger, but when it starts to come back, it enters this channel where the lowest value is 30, then I get an alert. That's not a real good example, but this alert here where I have the yellow line would have been the perfect entry. Okay, any questions on IMX? Yeah, uh, yeah, excuse me. Remember we were talking about the one, two, three dip sequence? Mm-hmm. So this looks like a one, two, three dip sequence even more that didn't even work out. Well, I guess it did work out down here. But how would you, how would I, am I interpreting it correctly and it's just not a good example? Or is there something that you're looking at that you go, no, this wouldn't work out? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, you can use the one, two, three dip on larger time frames. I only use it on the five minute chart, but you can, I've seen other traders use it on the 15 or 30 or an hour or whatever. My goal in um, in catching this at the bottom, what trick, what, how I found this was looking for one, two, three dips, and it's hard to do an alert for one. So when you have this scenario and it dips down, maybe use this time. This happened on the 15-minute chart, 1800 on Sunday. If I go to the five-minute chart, click on 1800 on Sunday. Go to, yeah, right about here. Well, here, yeah, here's the value. See, we're in a dip sequence on the five minute chart. Okay. It's not a perfect example because we have the squeeze here. Mm -hmm. Well, it does hit the SMA line, so that would re trigger. And we have another little bit of squeeze here. So we have one, two, it's not, not real well formed, sort of more of a two, and then a, then a move up. But anyway, this is the kind of thing I'm trying to find using that 15 minute alert. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. When it dips okay. on the RSI in the 15 minute, that usually corresponds to a a second or third dip on the five minute chart for that those one, two, three dips that we like. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions on on the RSI or any of the other strategies that we went over here on the IMX? Okay, I went through that in some detail. So the next few, I'm gonna go through quicker. And if you're you know, struggling to keep up, actually most of you guys have been on with me many times. You're, you probably teach this as well as I could at this point. But if you're watching this on the recording, you know, it's nothing wrong with stopping it, making a note or rewinding it or watching it more than once. So, or you could email me with a question. Okay, so that's IMX, altcoin alert. We did the AA score. I've been getting back to the long-term sentiment more. It's one of my favorite sorts. I'm looking for bullish or very bullish. 
on the long-term sentiment, which is the Twitter data, and matching that up with the elder impulse daily, which is a technical indicator. And when they match up, that's something worthy of further investigation. These I looked at were pretty poor volume Celsius. I'm not sure why that, aren't they bankrupt or something? Anyway, maybe I'm confusing them with someone else. But Render and Cardano are coins I trade with some frequency, especially Render. Let's check that one out. I set up an alert with this one this morning. And... Render's been crazy good lately, hasn't it? Yeah, this big pump here came out of nowhere, and then it dropped again, which makes me wonder if somebody fell asleep on their keyboard or something. But it's it's had some some of this kind of movement that's been pretty nice. Though I, I did get stopped out of one, I think on Wednesday or Thursday last week. But other than that, it's been pretty good. You can see I've got my RSI set up here already. And let's start with diet. Well, we'll look at the five minute chart real quick. Yeah, despite Peter's agreement with me on that. Still kind of squeezy at the moment. Not a lot of room to move. Let's go to our 15 minute alert or indicators. Divergence. Yeah, this one would have you'd have been liquidated or in trouble on this one here. That looks really random to me. 24%. And then right back down. It actually went below from where it pumped, you know, less than a day later. So I think this is kind of an outlier, but I did take it in consideration. I think I went with the, yeah, I went with the super trend on this one. So with a move like that against me, that for me rules out using divergence. So I'm going to punt that and super trend caught that big move in the cells. You know, we're really good to this one. You'd still be in. That's from this morning. I might be in this one. I'm actually in a long on this. I caught, I took this one here and that's gone nowhere. So the last two on super trend haven't been that great but it did avoid this big move going against us. And the RSI caught this big move coming down. That's about it. So yeah, that is not triggered for me yet today, obviously. Okay, any questions on render? All righty. We'll look at one more on altcoin alert. Let's go to social activity. So less precise version of sentiment and elder impulse. I'm gonna match up social activity and trading activity. And we've got AKT again. Aon. I'm not seeing any matches here and in, in coins I actually trade. I've got stars on the coins I actually trade. And I'm not seeing any. Tron I looked at this morning. Tron's kind of frustrating. It doesn't move quite enough to... It's kind of like BNB. It doesn't really move that much unless there's significant action so on a daily move, it just kind of puts us around sideways and not enough to trigger anything decent. So I don't care for it. Luvium, is that something I can trade? I've been trading BitGet for the last few weeks. It has fewer options than, than Bybit, which I was trading before. Okay, we've got, well, shoot, doesn't match either. Render again. All right, well, now I'm wasting your guys' time. UTK? No. CFX. Let's just look at that one. Is that on my list? It is not. Let's 
on Binance and KuCoin. It's like decent volume. Trending up today. Two percent between the bands. That's better movement than I thought. Okay, let's look for divergence. Uh, looks pretty good. I try to look at, just measure some of these that I'm not sure about. This one's not good. Well, 4.9, so I would have had two ladder buys, and then I might have gotten out here. But the, these three are concerning. This one may have gotten out. Yeah, ladder buy, and then another one, and then out here. So divergence potentially... Super trend, better, but far less frequent. Yeah, we've got now here about half a day. This buy did really well. This sell did really well. And this buy did really well. So kind of like super trend on this. RSI. I'm not sure if CFX can be shorted or not. It's not on BitGet. Let's see if it's on any of the other leverage exchanges. Um, it's on Femax. So, so it's a spot trading pair. BitGet spot. Uh, there's a perpetual contract on Bybit. Oh, it is on BitGet. Huh. Yeah, look at that again. So you can trade this both directions. So, so I like I really like Super Trend on this one. On RSI, doesn't quite make. We do have this drop. That's a good move down. That's obviously a good move up. This might have been trouble though. Yeah, you'd, you'd be in trouble on that one. You took this short. It's 4.30 in the morning. Sometimes I take that into consideration. It's like, eh, I'm not trading that early. Yeah, 11%. That's probably, I'm probably stopped out of that one. So RSI is a little suspect. Super trend seems to be the way to go on this one. Any questions on CFX before we go to iCoin Pro? All right. Hey, you see, CJ, just to ask you about when you're doing that later buys, you go two percent and four percent. Mm -hmm. Do you um, do you set your alarms for that? Set your alerts. I used to. I'm using a, a third party software now called Carbon that does it for me. Uh, you can do things like that. You can set additional purchases on on three commas if you want to use that one. Though that one's I think complicated to use, or you can just set them up on your on your exchange. I think setting up three or four or five two percent ladder buys is a bit of a headache. You know, doing the math and all that, and you know, figuring out how much to put in, and so that, yeah. I've automated that in my trading. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And also. I, I go in at the same amount as my original purchase. That's the way I'm doing it now. Some people like to go in bigger. That's fine. You know, if you could, if your money management, your you you manage your balance correctly, you can go in bigger moves as it goes against you because you're you're improving your position more. And if you're interested in this, you know, strategy and money management, I've done multiple videos on it. You might want to look at videos from 2021 and 2020 that I did discussing ladder buying in some detail. So, all right, let's head over to iCoin Pro, home of the one, two, three dip. 
And it's got two info information sources I like, the RSI Spy and the Buddy Coin Crawler. I'm mostly focused on the RSI Spy. Looking for val. I'm sorting by the one hour RSI. You've seen me looking at the 15 minute RSI. This one hour RSI will tell me any coin on the exchange that I've selected that's oversold or overbought. Over, oversold is usually below 30 and overbought above 70. So we've got a couple above 70. Actually, it was Neo, the one I was trading earlier, not, not Nano. So if this is new, seller. This wasn't here this morning, so let's check this one out. It's got this handy drop-down menu. Click on Trading View. It'll, op it'll open a five-minute chart of that token on the last layout that you looked at. So it's bringing up my basic chart, five minutes. And as you can see, it's trending up pretty well today. And sort of going into a bubble on the on the pump side. It's only three percent between the Bollinger bands. It's not a huge bubble. So if you want to do a price alert, there's some support here at about 2.12 cents. Some more down here at about 2.105, and quite a bit down here, 2.08. On our 15 minute chart with the indicators. That short did really well. Doesn't. These longs would have taken a while. Let's say if you took this one on Saturday night, yeah, you're down, probably ladder buying twice. Yeah, right about there, and then you probably get out here. Or you get out around here. So you're in this trade for about a day on that. And this long did not do well until this move happened. So these shorts aren't doing well. <laughs> so divergence is not doing that well on, on this setup. Divergence does better when the market's going like this. When it's going up hard in one direction without many pullbacks, it's not very useful. Okay, super trend. Kind of whiffed on this buy. That sell did well. This buy probably did not. No, we had to ladder buy at least once and then probably caught this. But it looks like it looks better than than divergence on the RSI. Get this entry here. Doesn't look good. No, you'd have gone through this sequence here. Way to get out over here. Been in this for over a day. Better entry here. So you probably catch this move. That's not bad. And then on the upside here. My shift isn't working very well. No, you're, yeah, you're caught in this. So you'd be in this for a while. None of these did all that great. Each of them had a serious flaw. So, you know, strategy is perfect. And this is a prime example of it. I think super trend might've been the best of the three we looked at, but none of them were, were ideal. Okay, any questions on seller? We will do, the IOTA just crept in here. Well, let's sort this way. You don't have any below 30 at the moment. Let's see if we have any other close. Harmony's at 34, Tezos at 36. If it's, you know, you, well, what the hey, we've got, we'll look at this one, Harmony. We looked at this one on Friday a little bit. Oh, 
Ooh, might be in a dip se sequence now on this. All right, we've got squeeze in a bubble. We like that. One, two, three. Maybe that's a fourth. Yeah, right now, one, two, three dip on Harmony. So... Not trading advice, but I'm in almost. Well, let's say you don't like this one. It's like, well, I want confirmation on the 15 minute chart. So you can see it's a good example. The RSI dipped below the 30, starting to hook back up. You might want to might, might, might want to wait till it crosses over the 30 before you get in. That would be reasonable wait, on that one. All right, I'm hearing background noise. Okay, went away. Let's go to our usual approach on divergence. Terrible. <laughs> Any better moves than this or divergence is going to be really wonky. <laughs> Yeah, all, all these, none of these up here did very well. Of course, these are on the weekend when volume's lower anyway. I wonder if I should disregard divergence on Saturdays and Sundays. I'll just pick up on Monday. All right, well, I'll make that convenient policy change right now. And let's look at our divergences from today. Um, yep. Yeah. Probably if I got a perfect entry on this, I, I, I got to get out with 1% pretty quickly. This one's forming now, but again, we, we've seen the one, two, three dip, so it makes sense that a bullish divergence would form. And then on super trend, yeah, these two from the weekend didn't that do that well. The sell did really well from so Saturday or Sunday, Saturday night. Uh, this buy went nowhere. The sell looks good. There's no perfect setups that I've seen today where it's like, yes, definitely go with divergence or super trend or RSI. Both of each one of them that we looked at has 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 some flaws. Any questions on Harmony or iCoin Pro? Or how would you say the one, two, three dip right now on harmony has a flaw? No, that was, I was meant, I was talking about the 15 minute indicator alerts. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. The five minute on harmony looks pretty good. Other than it's printing a red candle at the moment. I prefer to get in on green ones, but a little bit of late just saw this. So if I'm down a little bit at first, I don't mind. But the odds are, you know, way better than than fifty percent that this will trend up soon. Might be tempting the crypto gods with a bold statement like that, but we'll see. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? Very well. I'll stop the recording here. If you're watching on the recording, thank you for doing that. Hope to see you live next time. Check out the opportunities in the pinned comment to help fund the channel. If you're a Carbon member, stick around. We will do that Zoom next. See you next time.